Hello, I'm Dana Rizzo, your door-to-door storyteller, and I'd like to give you a story. This story is called Encounter at Dragon Valley by Joe Potts. I feel him approaching. I sense his deadly intent. Crouching in the opening to my home, I shield my children behind me, keeping them safe from the assassin's razor-like sword. But my fear threatens to destroy me. Will I be able to stop him from slaying me? What will become of my children? He has already murdered my husband. My dear husband slew many of the assassin's allies, but in the end, he succumbed to the swift, horrible sword. Will I also taste the blade that took my love? Will I leave my children defenseless? No, with my dying breath, I will protect them. Easy words, but the fear surges through me, shaking my bones, rattling my scales. My dry mouth is unable to secrete the juices needed to fuel my hot breath and ignite it into flame. In the dark of the waning twilight, I see him slowly, deliberately coming nearer. My superior vision does not fail me, though my courage may. Even at this distance, his presence is intimidating. He sits atop a powerful black steed. They are both clothed in rich red and black garments. He exudes the confidence of a conqueror who can slay with a look. One, two, three prancing steps of the steed. Closer the assassin comes, and I can see his eyes. Jay-Z, my youngest, hisses and spits, his proximity alarming her. I scold her and tell her to be quiet. My brave baby, stay behind me. Concentrating, willing the fear aside, I make a bold decision and lift my secondary eyelids. Seeing into and through his frightening pale eyes, I penetrate his mind. I am not prepared for what I see. I shake my head against the wet walls of the cave. Surely my fear is playing tricks with me. But no, I see it. I see it in his eyes, feel it in his thoughts, sense it in his heart. Fear. Fear beyond comprehension. He is frightened, frightened past sense and will. His fear, if possible, is greater than my own. I have miscalculated and misjudged. The deepest dungeon of my dragon brain formulates the new course I must take, a more dangerous course than I could have imagined just minutes before. At stake are not only my life and the lives of my children, but of the generations to follow. Slowly, I rise, my stiff limbs grinding, my claws scraping the cave floor, my wings rising and spreading. I must succeed. I pass through the cave entrance, leaving my home, and move as quickly as I can in his direction. There is barely room to launch into the air, but still I rise, one, two dragon lengths above the assassin. I circle slowly above him as he traces great arcs over his head with a sword its edge glinting in the moonlight. The reflection of the hard, cold blade sends a sharp pang of terror through my heart. My fear intensifies, but I sense that his is also mounting. My unfurled wings and long claws, my large mouth and dragon teeth, each as long as his sword, have pushed his fear to new heights. In spite of my own crippling fright, I must get nearer. I must land directly in front of him. We must see into each other's eyes, and his weak human sight can only do that up close. My courage and fear confront each other. Courage must win. For my babies, for my breed. I descend, managing a roar that I hope will delay his deadly blade. His steed rears up, reacting to my presence, but he holds on tightly. I smell the steed's fear, and I am sorry to cause it such pain. As I touch the ground, my claws digging in, the stallion bravely snorts and settles down onto its front legs. I move ahead, thrusting my head forward, so near to him that the terrible sword is within striking distance. Oh, help me, departed husband. As the assassin raises the weapon over his head, ready to deliver the mortal thrust, I take one step closer. Through the eye-slit opening of his visor, my vision penetrates his eyes into the maelstrom of his mind. The danger of my plan almost sends me into a blind panic. With one last desperate act of will, I cast aside my fear and throw open the gates of my mind. We connect. Ah, so long ago, even to a dragon's sensibility. He lies before me, motionless, 
his magnificent sword is on the ground. I stretch out a forelimb, gently touching his inert body. No response. I nudge a bit harder. He awakens. He smiles when he sees me looming over him. He gives me a sheepish look because my former foe loves to protect me now, standing guard over me like an archangel with his heavenly blade. I reach down and caress his face. My dragon babies and his human children are playing down in Dragon Valley, swooping and screeching and running and laughing as youngsters always do. I think of that day, seasons ago, when we faced each other and realized for the first time that our true enemy was fear. How precious that first time my dragon senses connected with his mind. We felt each other's thoughts, experienced each other's feelings. We understood each other. Now we live in Dragon Valley in peace. We live in happiness, devoted to each other. A few of our kind have joined us. They have seen their ancient foes as new friends because of our newfound understanding. There are those who still do not accept this harmony, but we are not discouraged. We continue to persuade those who will open their minds as we strive to make a new world. My sweet George and me. You just listened to Encounter at Dragon Valley by Joe Potts, read to you by your door-to-door storyteller, Dana Rizzo. Thank you for listening. A production of We Are One Body Audio Theater.